Thank you, Tanya. The question is, are kids able to change the world? Can children, starting in kindergarten, be citizen diplomats? As Tanya indicated, I'm the principal of an urban Catholic school that serves a diverse economic and, ethnically, and ethnic population. We have kids that come from lots of different neighborhoods and lots of different faith traditions. All are welcome. I believe that the answer to citizen diplomat starts with global education, and that's the program that we've developed over the last 30 years. It begins with geography. Our expectation is that every student who graduates from our school after nine years, kindergarten through grade eight, will be able to identify the location of every country in the world. They will know all about the physical features of our planet, mountain ranges, ocean seas, bays, rivers, deserts. It gives them a point of context. When they hear about a tsunami in Japan, pirates off the coast of Somalia, when they hear about endangered turtles on the Galapagos Islands, or they wonder if the Maldive Islands will sink below the sea because of the rising sea levels due to global warming, they have a context for that information. And you know, it's really much more fun to be geographically literate when you deal with the world. The puzzle pieces start to come together. So that's what we expect for our students, that they are geographically literate, politically and physical. Political geography, physical geography. It also incorporates world languages. We offer Spanish, Chinese, and Latin. Spanish because it's becoming the second language in our country. Chinese because the increasing political and economic importance of China. It's mandatory that our students have an exposure, a familiarity, and understanding of that language, that culture, those traditions. And Latin. Latin because it's the basis for Romance languages and because it's a good foundation for those who will study law and medicine. Geography, world languages, and then you bring it together. When you open your home, you open your school, you open your community to kids from around the world. So we welcome delegations from schools across the world to spend time in our community, live with our families, attend classes in our school, and visit every grade, kindergarten through grade eight, sharing information about their culture, their traditions, their games, the things they like to do, the things they hope to be, the careers they want to study for. Every student, kindergarten through grade eight, is impacted by that visiting delegation. And we, in turn, send delegations abroad to tell our story, the story of kids in Pleasant Ridge and Cincinnati, the story of kids that live in Ohio and the United States, to go beyond the stereotypes that other students have about our country. It starts in grade five. Fifth graders and sixth graders go abroad as delegates, members of a delegation, to visit other schools, as do seventh and eighth graders. It all started in 1980 when we sent the first delegation to Alinka School in Mexico City. And since then, the program has evolved. In 1995, we signed a memorandum of understanding with Torkin Maki School in Kokola, Finland. And in 2007, with tremendous assistance from the Cincinnati Leo Joe Sister Cities Project, we located a partner school, Longcheng Middle School, and we've been partners ever since. Student exchanges, teaching of Chinese, exploring each other's cultures and traditions, building that bridge of understanding across the Pacific. There's more to do. We don't really have much contact with the Arab world, with Muslim nations. They don't live in Pleasant Ridge, but people of Muslim tradition. And we haven't found a partner school in Northern Africa or Southwest Asia that's willing to partner with an American school in Middle America that's religiously affiliated. So we did the next best thing. We made the study of the Islamic nations the focus for our sixth grade social studies curriculum. Students work in collaborative groups. They do a ton of research on the nation that they've chosen among the Arab nations in Northern Africa, Southwest Asia. They ask open-ended questions. They look at all the traditions and, and history as sixth graders would. And then we invite immigrants or citizens from Muslim nations, from their Muslim nation, to come and spend an afternoon with them. It's amazing to watch a group of sixth graders sit down at a table and engage in a conversation, asking those open-ended questions, exploring those stereotypes with people of another faith, another nationality, another culture, and another tradition. 
they're never the same afterwards when they've had that kind of encounter and that type of opportunity to engage with people for Americans, for many of us, are the other after 9-11. It's an incredible experience for them. But it doesn't stop there. Because now that you have an understanding of the world, you know where things are, and you've been exposed to the world languages that have opened doors to traditions and history and literature, and now that you've met people from other countries, through kindergarten through eighth grade, you've had the opportunity to meet delegations from 12, 13 different countries in your elementary school years. Now's the time to walk the walk. And so the eighth graders take the lead, and with the upper school students, they research projects, areas of need, places where they can make a difference in the world. They stage teach-ins, they organize fundraising, and they make a contribution to Four Days for Darfur. Help for Haiti was one week. Spina bifida, childhood leukemia. They put their actions, they put their words into action, and they make a difference. That's global education at its best, and that's kids who are becoming citizen diplomats. And I'm here to adv advocate for global education kindergarten through grade eight. High school's almost too late. College is a lot of fun. It's got to start in kindergarten. <laughs> that type of experience, kindergarten through grade eight, has a tremendous impact on kids, and the world really is never the same. People halfway across the world are now friends. A name on a map of a country is now replaced by faces and names of kids you ate lunch with, played on recess with, who visited your classroom, who taught you some how to count to 10 in their language, who shared a song with you, who had a current events discussion with you. Life is different, and you are changed forever because of that in your very formative years, kindergarten through grade eight. And the school has changed. There's more tolerance, there's more acceptance for the other, for the different, because you've met it, you've encountered it, and maybe they've lived in your home. Maybe you've hosted one of those students as one of those delegations. Maybe you were in second grade and your older brother hosted somebody. The school becomes more tolerant and more accepting of that which is diverse. And imagine if you were a fifth grader stepping off of a plane in Kharkiv, Ukraine, or Kokola, Finland, or Liuzhou, China, to stay with a family you've never met, who speaks a language you don't understand, who eats food you are not familiar with, and an environment that you may not have experienced. There's nothing like February in Finland. <laughs> it changes you and you come back. Increased confidence, your, your sense of independence and what you can accomplish just grows exponentially. And then you share that with the school community. Or you've hosted a student from abroad that you've never met, exchanged an email, who may not be very conversant in English and who certainly has a different tradition and a different culture. It changes you, it changes your family, it changes your community, it changes your school. That's the power of global education. I believe, and there's anecdotal evidence to support, that our students will not grow up and burn the Koran. Our students will not grow up to produce a movie that denigrates another religion. I believe, and there's anecdotal evidence to suggest that our students will turn swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. This is global education at its best. Kids at this age are open and eager to learn and accepting of what is new and different. This is what it's all about in terms of becoming a citizen diplomat to give the kids the tools and the experiences that enable them to reach out into the world, to get to know the world, to embrace that which is different, and to truly know who they are and where they've come from and what their tradition and history is. You know, when we were kids, our world was our neighborhood. Today, for these kids, their neighborhood is the world. This is the friendship journey, and it's time to change the world. Thank you.